What's poppin' people? This week I take you with me to the Paint Your Lips Red Brunch. The Paint Your Lips Red Foundation was founded by Dr. Carmetria Burton. There she is there. She strives towards a collaborative mission to focus on leadership habits that will empower all women. She is a true powerhouse and mentor for black women. I knew upon entering the event that it was going to be life-changing because the energy was just so high. She had a diverse group of women who each had their own unique stories. Coach T. Renee was the perfect host, and she got us very pumped up for the event. Welcome to the 4th Annual P.Y.L. Laura! Now, for everybody that was doing this, that's not going to work today. Let me see you do it high. Yes, yes. All right. All right, so the energy that you start the day off with determines your breakthrough yes. for the day. Yes. So how many of us are ready to break through every single barrier that we, that we face? Let me hear you say, I am. I am. How many of us are ready to break through in our relationships? That marriage where we're like, Lord, I'm gonna know what you're gonna do with this husband. Or that future person that you're looking for. How many of y'all ready to break through? I am. Ready to break through in your finances? I am. Ready to break through in your health? So let me hear you say, I am whole. I am whole. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a conqueror. I am a conqueror. And I am all around bad. And I am all around bad. All right, grab your seat, but keep that in there. She invited Sierra Thompson to come up and do the welcome for us. And I love the way each woman um, entered uh, the event um, to take on her hosting duties, um, dancing to a song that represents her energy. Um, so um, here we were jamming with <laughs> Sierra. She was dancing to Beyonce. Of course, I can't let y'all hear because of copyrights. Hey, DJ. Y'all, I love that song. It gets me hyped. That's what I play probably every day to just get me going, right? Um, so hello, ladies. How are you guys doing? Um, I am super excited to be here. Um, it's a pleasure to welcome you guys to the fourth annual Paint Your Lips Red Women's History Month Power Lunch. And let's give it up for Dr. Kimberly. <laughs> that you will leave here full and charged up. And I love that the theme this year is leaning into this idea of powering up. Reminds me of when you're out and about, right? And your phone is on 3%, you're scrambling and stressed out because you, you need to use your GPS system to get back home, right? And all of a sudden your sister friend pulls out that charger and you're like, oh, thank you girl, you saved the day. And she told the absolute the truth because I had no idea like how powered up I was about to become. As Sierra closed out the welcome, Coach T. Renee was preparing us to see ourselves. But I want you to meet yourself today. So everybody look, 20 things about yourself, no looking away. And if tears come, just let them fall. Don't look away. Don't look away. 20 things about yourself. Now I see some of your eyes going up in the air, okay? Look at the mirror, 20 things. So we were asked to look at ourselves on our camera phones and we had to think of 20 positive things to say to ourselves. And y'all, this was actually harder than you think. Next up was this member of the Paint Your Lips Red Foundation. Her name is Kiana. Y'all see her dancing up to the podium. Um, she came up to share with us the benefits of joining the foundation. My name is Paige and I'm absolutely honored to be here today. That's right. I'm honored to be here today, and I chose this song, Happy, because this is how I feel when I think about the impact that PYLR has had on my life. I must say that I believe that PYLR for me was heaven sent, and I say that <laughs> and next up and Mimi to those who finally love her yep there she is 
the queen herself, Dr. Kametria Burton. She made a grand entrance to Lizzo's feeling good as hell, and rightfully so. Uh, she has such a powerful presence and aura, um, and it was right about now that I knew, okay, it's about to be on and popping because she was so ready to just pour into it. So the woman that came before me, Queen Mother, stand up. This is my mother. my mom had me when she was 17. We don't tell that story a lot. And we need to start telling our story more, ladies. And it's not that you're telling your business. It's that you're connecting. And sometimes other women have gone through the same thing, and we can help each other. But we don't share because why? We need to create safe spaces for each other. Stop telling your girlfriend secrets. When she comes to you in confidence, that is not the time to tell her secret. Create a safe, non-judgmental space to hear from her. Because some of us are hurting. And we don't want nobody to know it because we think we got it up, we got it going on. I can't be authentic. I can't show people what's wrong with me. Ladies, we got to get over that. The only way we're going to step into our power is if we remove the mask yes. and be real. And I don't have a problem being real. I'm going to share a powerless moment that I have, you know, soon. And so will Dr. Sherry. So 
Um, thank you for this, and I want to talk to you about, before we get started, um, speaking of all of those that came before us, and PYLR was started because of my grandmother. We were her caregiver <coughs> when she was sick, and she would say, give me my red lipstick. I was like, really? We just go into the doctor. But that was her power. That was her cape. I'm going to go get blood drawn. I got to be hooked up to this dialysis machine. But I'm going to have on my red lipstick, and nobody's going to know what I'm going through. Because I, she showed up. And that is what Pete YLR is for. My big mama, Dorothy Jean Walker. So this is in her honor. So this is her legacy. So I want to praise God for my grandmother and all the grandmothers, your grandmothers as well, that came before us. And we have to start doing that and sustaining legacies for people. So I want to talk about, I want to set the stage before I get Dr. Sherry up, power. When you think of a powerful woman, often we think what? Job title, salary, where she lives, what her husband does, how many inches she got, if she got that BBL. Come on. Everybody know what BBL is, right? If she got that designer bag, that is not power. Come on. I want us to redefine that today because I feel like we're getting up every day achieving something that is not attainable. Mm -hmm. And it's not sustainable, it's not realistic. Power, ladies, is a mindset. Yeah. Would you agree? Yes. yes. It's a mindset. Powerless moment, the year was 2020. If I could do a do-over, remember COVID? Mm -hmm. yes. Right. That was a bad year, but it was also a year of opportunity and learning. It was for me. God really made me sit down and he told me a lot of things. The year was 2020. I made the decision to leave a burgeoning corporate job with no job to go to. I knew God would provide, right? I said, Lord, I'm gonna do this. I had been with this company for 12 years. I hadn't written a resume. I hadn't been on an interview. Lord, how am I gonna do this? But I knew it was time to leave because I was dimming my light where I was working. Mm -hmm. How many of you have done that? Mm -hmm. Stop it. We're gonna talk about that. I was dimming my light where I was working and I knew it was time to go somewhere else. And I said, Lord, I haven't written a resume. I haven't been on a job interview in years. Just guide me. It's like, okay, I got you. The one thing I wanna tell you, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the call. So if God is telling you to do something, you better do it. He will provide the resources later, but be obedient. That's the key. So the year was 2020. I left this bomb corporate job. Everybody knew Carmitra Burton at this place. It was December 1st, and that was my last day. I got up. I was like, Lord, this is my new, what are you, what is the vision? At about 5.30 that evening, my mother called me. She had fallen and broke her shoulder. It's like, oh my God. I've been calling her, she didn't answer, and that's me and mom talk all day. Dad was home, I ran home, my mom was laying on the floor, crying and shaking. And as you know, as we get older, our parents kind of become our children. Like, take yes. care of them, because we should. We want to serve them. So my mom had broken her shoulder, she was crying, and I looked, and I'm like, I never seen my mom look defeated. My mom is a strong woman. I never seen that. And it scared me. I never seen my mom that way. Got her to the hospital, thank God it was just a broken shoulder. Ultimately impacted her back. But God is good, we moved through that. Two weeks later, my husband got up one morning and said, I can't walk. And I said, huh? Let's rewind. My husband had been complaining of back pain. And we thought it was a poor muscle, we we're very active. We just ignored it. We kept medicating with Tylenol and um, uh, salon paws and been gay and things like that. We just thought it was a, a muscle, right? And you ladies, you know, when men don't feel good, they revert to being four years old. He was getting on my nerves, but I wanted to be sensitive. I wanted to be a good wife. I'm like, boy, get up the wall. It ain't nothing wrong with you, right? And I was like, okay, maybe be a little more sensitive, give him a little grace. He's like, babe, I'm for real, my back is hurting. So I was like, no problem. Saturday morning, he got up and said, I can't walk. I'm going, yeah, right, you know, sometimes men exaggerate. He wasn't exaggerating. So we called the doctor. He said, get him to the ER. And it was during COVID. So I had to drop him off. I couldn't stay with him. And he was looking at me like a little boy. You know how they get. He's like, you can't come here. I said, 
it's COVID, I can't come in. I don't want to get kicked out, they need to see you. He goes in and you know, I give him his phone, I pack him a little bag, you know how we do our men, right? Here are your snacks, call me when you get in here. Here are your snacks, call me when you get in You know how they are, they help us without us. He called, the doctor said, Miss Burton, this is Dr. whatever, your husband has a tumor on his spine. If we don't remove it, he's not gonna be able to walk. And if we really don't remove it, his speech is gonna slur. Now you guys know my husband, he's tall, athletic guy, he's played professional basketball, totally what we did not expect. And we never do. We need to do surgery immediately. My husband and I talked about it, we prayed. I asked all the right questions. He said, we can do the surgery for recovery, no issues. Mm. I said, okay. Back surgery, T4, anybody know what that is? Took the tumor out, but back surgery is no joke because it's mm -hmm. poor. That's right. It holds you up, right? So we did the surgery. This was December 18th. My <clears> husband <throat> was in the hospital on Christmas. I freaked out. I'm like, what am I going to do? Having a good support system. My mom and dad brought all the gifts over to my house, the food and everything. And we packed up dinner and took my husband dinner on Christmas Day. He was doing good. He came home. He was on a walker. Keep in mind, my mom was still in the cast. I'm still unemployed, but that's not so important now. And now my husband is home, and he's on a walk, and I'm having to help him. Here I am in between the two most important people of my life, uh -huh. the person that gave me life and the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. Mm. And I was going to the doctor, giving medicine. You okay? You okay. Mama, you good? Baby, you good, right? Tired. Coming from the store with my husband's prescription, I fell asleep at a red light. Mm. Ladies, I was tired. Yeah. But I didn't ask for help. I didn't ask none of my girlfriends for help. First mistake. Mm -hmm. I got it. I'm Mimi, I got this. I traveled <clears> the world, <throat> I got a job, I got this. I fell asleep at the red light, the cars were honking at me. Finally, a guy came up to the door to make sure I was okay. I said, oh my God, thank you. So I'm driving, by this time, I'm bawling in tears. I'm going, God, what do you want me to do? I feel so hopeless, so powerless. Mom, my dad, I'm in the middle, I'm not working, I'm trying to satisfy everybody. And he said, in this moment, I'm gonna give you the power you need. In this moment, I'm gonna give you everything you need. Repeat after me, I have everything I need. I have everything I need. To be everything I need to be. To be everything I need to be. It's in you. That's right. It's in you. That's right. Sometimes we don't realize that because we have these powerless moments. Mm -hmm. We have these powerless moments. And I want you to know, that you are always powerful. And the one the way you know you're powerful is your value. This is $50, right? If I ball this up, is it still worth $50? Yes. yes. If I step on it, is it still worth $50? Yes. yes. Ladies, every day, we are abused, we are boxed out, we mm -hmm. are looked over, mm -hmm. but you are still powerful. Mm -hmm. You've been passed over for that job promotion. You didn't get the client you want. The relationship you have is not working out. You are still powerful. Mm -hmm. See, we have to stop allowing things to define our power. Yes. It's within you. It's already there. Mm -hmm. And we are here to make sure that we keep you powered up. So I want you always to know your value. Even if you've been fired, even if your, your man broke up with you, you are valuable. Mm -hmm. You are powerful. It's still in you. The other thing I want us to stop believing that takes our power away is limited beliefs. What's the one thing somebody told you growing up about yourself that you believed? I was always told I talk too much. <laughs> you talk too much, be quiet. We'll give you $5 to be quiet. <laughs> and as a result of that, I stopped talking for years because I believed it. So we gotta stop believing those limited beliefs, the things that are not true that people tell us and then stop believing those untruths you tell yourself. That mirror exercise was powerful. When I was looking in the mirror, I was like, oh, my skin does not look. I didn't understand the assignment. I was looking at the wrong stuff, right? I got a pimple right here, she has my makeup right here. Looking at the wrong thing. But I want you to stop those limited beliefs. I want you to know how valued you are. And I want you to always know that you are powerful. And then the last thing, that I want you to stop doing is being afraid. This 
wouldn't be here if I was scared. And trust me, I'm scared to do it. This is the fourth one, and every year I'm scared. Lord, are the women going to come? Lord, social media is acting up. The algorithms are off. Lord, is anybody going to be there? And here you are showing up. Yeah. I have somebody that came from New Orleans. Thank you, Jade. Another girlfriend came from Dallas. I appreciate the support. So the power is in the room. So already here. The power is in the room. Next up, she brought up another powerhouse, Dr. Sherry Riley. She is a motivational speaker, and she's also a life coach to entertainers like Usher Raymond. She is also the author of Exponential Living, where she encourages you to stop spending 100% of your time on 10% of who you are. And I have to say, she's also my soror of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Please pay particular attention to how well Dr. Kamitria Burton leads this interview. I aspire to be like her. Dr. Sherry Riley <clears throat> is an author. She is international speaker, well-traveled. She's a coach. She's done work with Usher Raymond, a lot of athletes. Um, she is the bomb. Can I just say that? And it does not mean that she's never felt powerless. She's just, she just has tools to know how to get back on track. Mm -hmm. And so I'm happy that you're here to spend this time with the women. She has a book, Exponential Living. Yes. It's over on the table. Please purchase her book. You will not be sorry. And we're gonna kind of bring the book to stage here. We're gonna kind of talk about powerful moments and she's gonna give us some tips, tools, and resources from her book to navigate the conversation. Yes. Is that right? That is right. Okay, good. All right. That is right. Let's start. The conversation. All right, Dr. Sherry, who, who is Sherry Riley? Ooh, who is she? That is such a loaded question, but a wonderful question, because it's taken me all my whole life to answer that question. Um, who am I? I'm a listener. I'm a listener. And the reason that I amplify that is because I hear what you say and what you don't say. And it was such a struggle for me to own that I'm a listener, because why is that important? Right? When people say, who are you? You always go to what you do. Right? Oh, I'm this. I do that. I do this. And when I look back over my life when I was, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade, I was always that one that people would come to and tell me all their stories and all their secrets and all the things that was going on and then ask me for my advice. I mean, I was 15. I was 13. I was 10. My aunt, who had a nervous breakdown when I was eight, I was the only person she would talk to. Um, and I had to accept that's who I am. That's the anointing. That's the one, what I call your one thing, your overall navigating edge, is that I hear what you're not saying, but more importantly, I hear what God is saying. Mm. Notice she did not lead with, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm an author. Yeah. Say that one more time why you didn't lead with that. And I didn't lead with that because those are the things that I do. Mm. I and am a wife, that. and that's okay. what I do. I'm a mother, that's what I do. I'm an entrepreneur, that is what I do. I'm a speaker, I'm a coach. Those are the things that I do. But who I am is I'm a listener. Did y'all get that? Yes. So when somebody asks you who you are, it's who you are, not what you do. Yes. Right. right? Yeah, and the challenge is, is most of us don't even know the difference. So how do you define power? Mm. Peace is my power. Everything about power for me is peace. Uh -huh. Everything. One of the things that I talk about um, is, you know, peace is possible, peace is our power, and peace is the new success. Mm -hmm. And without peace, your power is always limited. Uh -huh. Because in order to get to power, you have to get to clarity. Mm -hmm. And in order to get to clarity, you have to have the peace, right? So a lot of times the challenge we have with the word power, why it is so external, is because we don't want to get to the clarity and we don't want to get to the place of peace. Never allow what you want to achieve uh -huh. to rob you of the joy of what you've already accomplished. Slow it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 one more time, she said slow it up a little bit. Never allow what you want to achieve to rob you of the joy of what you have already accomplished. That's good. I want you to stop right there. And you know why we do that? Because sometimes we are perfectionists. 
Ladies, it does not exist. Excellence does. But sometimes we are perfectionists and we want to do it right. We want to do it right. It's never, you, you, you're, you're going for a moving target. Let's just be clear. Mm -hmm. So all my type A personality people, raise your hand. <laughs> right? Give yourself grace. Stop striving for perfection and work towards excellence. As you can see, these ladies really dropped some gems on us. Um, at the end of the event, the DJ spun some more tunes for us. We were able to network. Um, we had some really good food. I think I said brunch earlier, but it was actually a lunch. It was a luncheon. Um, and it was just all around a good time.